was a good man. He uh, he, he he helps people he brings the like like he, he he comes to Yakmir, goes over to uh, Lyle, and he brings a crate of cantaloupes. He brings it, gives these people things, and he just helps people in every way he can. But he's never served the Lord. What are you going to do about it? What? How can we reach these people? There must be a way of reaching them. I don't know how, but it, it disturbs me. I know that we should reach out and touch people. There's something, something in us. So he, to our shame, they are often they are the ones providing neighbor to a hurting world. Maybe they shame, they, maybe they shame us into action when we must get up and do something. So as fuzzy as it may seem, it is possible to be very involved in meeting the needs of a hurting world and yet be inconsiderate one of another. These are all poor Negro children. But anyway, this uh, this this, uh, this teacher would go around and he'd collect. He went to one place and he said, I want some money for my school. He said, you get out of here. Every year he said, you come doing the same thing. He says, I'm not going to give you anymore. He said, get out. The old darky assured him, sorry, the old Negro, he said, let me tell you a story. He said, I used to have a little boy years ago. He'd say, I want a nickel for this, a nickel for that, paper, he wanted shoes, he wanted this, he wanted that. He said, you know, that little boy died. Now he don't ask for anything. He would ask for a thing. And he went on and told what he wished he could do for that boy. And the man says, you come back any time you want. He says, I'm going to give you some money. But friends, there's a lot of people who are hurting. They're needy. They have needs that you and I, if we have to get down and look, have to, somebody have to get down and look for them. But you can't find them. But we, and, uh, uh, unless you get down and search. But people are hurting. And oftentimes I feel that I, I myself, I think all about me, what I, what, what I need, what I want. But, but there's people who are hurting and need a lot of things. So the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian believers they could buy meat sold in the marketplace that might have been offered to an idol. Here's some other things now. I have to be, do I have to be careful of my, other, my, my brother's um, scruples? Do I? I sure do. I stopped one time uh, when Sandy was small. I stopped one time I, back in Seattle. I had to, uh, had to get a nickel for a parking meter. The only place to get into was a bar. I came out and said, he said, is that a good thing? To, is, that a, is that a good testimony? Oh, and somebody said, I saw you come out of the bar, didn't know what you was in there for. I never thought of that. I needed a nickel. <laughs> but uh, we have to, should I be careful of, of, of my brother? Why, sure I do. Yeah. Oh, yes? Yeah, Bible in pocket, gun in hand. A gun in pocket, Bible in hand, one of the... But anyway, the early days, talk about the early early day Methodist and Presbyterian and Baptist preachers. These guys would go out in all kinds of weather. Sometimes they said the weather was so bad, only a Methodist preacher would be out in it. It was so bad. But see, the way they go into a bar and they come to the bar, they say, well, I'm going to have a, 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 a religious service. The barkeeper would say, okay, okay, friends, put away your cards. They still do it. Do they do that? Yes. Some, uh, look at Arthur Blessed. Yeah, yeah. That man, you know, you never have seen Arthur in yeah. a suit in your life. And I don't make, mean that that makes him more holy oh, no. or anything else. But he knows where God has called him. And the bar yeah. have had an acquaintance with Jesus Christ and are backslidden. I had a friend uh, many years ago that went into the Topic Cafe or on North 1st Street. I think he's still down there. Anyhow, he got drunk and he was gambling and... Uh, the guy that he was gambling with, he got angry at him, and he leaped up and walked behind his chair and grabbed him by the head, and he slid his throat from here to here. And all Roy could do, see, he thought about the terrible mess he was making. All he could do is walk, and every time he started to eat, all his blood came out. And he got out to the curb, but the bartender was a lady who was backslidden. Accident where there were many, many people stood all over, and he said, This does anybody here want prayer? And a man held up his hand, he was a backslider. Yes, and he prayed for that guy just before he passed yes. away. Yes. Praise the Lord! So, we ought to be concerned uh, about other people. And uh, uh, Paul said, This about somebody go to a place where they're idols. Our Francis and I, at times in Sumatra, we go people who were who were Sikh, the Indian religion. They asked him to come to their feast. And they say, if they just said, I, I, I sometimes sometimes I would go. And I witnessed to these people. And he told
told me this. He said, Mr. Brown, he said, if I would become a Christian, I would lose everything I had. I'd lose everything. I said, no, you wouldn't. I said, you might lose everything this, but I said, look what you would gain. And he weighed the price and he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't give it up. But I said, let go to their feast. But they said, this is offered to an idol. They had idols there. I, then I, I, I wouldn't have gone, but they didn't say that. That's what Paul is talking about here. But I'm going, but my, my object was to try to get these people to, to, to come to the Lord. And I did, the Bible says, Paul said, I become all things to all men, that by all means I might save some. But oftentimes we don't want to do anything. It's possible for you, Margaret, to sell a lot of insurance and 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 and, uh, and, and people have other needs that you might not be aware of. Did you know that? I'm sure you do. Spiritually, it's priceless. Praise the Lord. Well, that's good to keep your options open, keep all these open like that. But uh, we can say, I am free of the Lord. I can do anything I want. No. I am free. I can do anything I want. I know people like this. I know people that do that. I am free. Why don't you be guided and, and limited by what someone else thinks? Paul wrote, I'll tell you why. It's because you must do everything for the glory of God. Well, as Paul says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. We have to be careful of our liberty. It's a good thing to have to be, to be free in the Lord, but uh, be careful of your liberty. Because I have to be careful that I don't cause someone else to stumble. Well, I uh, think that as Christians, we should be careful, we should be frank with one another and speak to one another if we have any doubts sure. rather than to jump on the conclusion and say, well, that person, I saw that person so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, maybe, but I've, I've been into these taverns a good many times, but the reason I went in there, we, were, we had to have help. Amen. Sure. Here we had all kinds of fruit to pick, much to harvest, and no, nobody to help us. So I went where the people were. That's right. And sometimes the guys they start talking kind of rough, and I just tell them, "I oh, look, fellas. If they got them in my car, I would haul them home, crib me out, and I cut up the tire. And sometimes I get a day of work out of them. Sometimes I would. <laughs> Didn't matter. I just said, "Come on." And if I can use you, all right. And they started roughing up, and I talked a lot, and I said, "Look, fellas, this car can stop, and you either shut up or I'll cut that out, or you get out of this car." I'm a Christian and I won't put up with it. Praise the Lord. Well, then they start talking religion. Well, I, they can talk religion all the time. But you'd be surprised how many people Amen. know a little bit about God. Amen. And, right. But they're not serving God. No. But all we have to do is take a stand. And if somebody wanted to judge me for going in there, to me, I figured the ones who know me, yeah. they know better. And the ones who wanted to make a lot of comment, well, that's up to them. Have a good old holiday and have fun. I did. Because uh, the thing is, we have to assert ourselves. That's right. And we have to careful not to judge each other yeah. on those that's kind right. of things. But if we were in doubt, speak, talk to one another, converse yeah. with one another. I had, a, I had a teacher in school named Adele Cox. Maybe some of you know Adele Cox over in Seattle. He was in, he was in, uh, he, he was in the store one time. The guy was cussing them down and just doing all kinds of stuff. I guess they, the devil is a big man. He tapped the fellow on the shoulder. He says, Sir, he says, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. He saved me and he changed my life completely. He says, I don't like the way you're talking. And the guy turned around and he said, I'm sorry. He says, I really wasn't raised this way. And he had, had the man appreciated it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we're too passive. Don't Many you think? Times I told the guy, Look, I'll do all the cutting on this ranch that's going to be done. And I don't cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, that's good. Even if they get a sense yeah. of humor out of it, and still at the same time they know exactly where you stand. So we should do all that we do for the glory of God. If you're yeah. picking apples, yeah. if you're pruning, do the best you know how. Right. I haven't always done that. But live for God. That's right. So uh, the, uh, the, to, the uh, ultimate example is to be like Jesus as much as you <coughs> possibly can. And uh, does the moon have a light of its own, Margie? No. Pardon? Exactly. So we should reflect what? Jesus. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. All his wonderful power and purity. All the spirit divine. All my nature refine. Till Where are they going to see? Where are they going to see?
you going to see them? They don't see us, Ken. Nowhere, probably. Because they don't go to church. Paul says, we're letters known and read of all men. What are they reading you, you think, Norma? I'm sure they see that you're a Christian. How about you, Brother Ainsley? Now, the Bible says, do all we do. When you get out, do you, do you ever talk to a guest, to people at the gas pump about the Lord? Gas pump? Mm -hmm. People at the gas pump? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. I run. It's all horribly obnoxious. You're not either. I think like having somebody filming, I mean, filming you, doing everything. But it'll be nice to show its head and to have... Mm -hmm. Might go out in front and get a picture of Margie's house so you can get an idea what it's like. Okay, as long as you, as long as you're in it. Pictures of <laughs> pictures of inanimate objects are always boring unless there's a person sometimes. Yeah, I in the picture. Yeah. I forgot. I, I my battery when I brought this this camera to your Sunday school class. I had no sooner started it's filming. Seems it's broke. Oh, same same kind. I see. I know sort of started filming when it died, the kid uh, on battery, a battery died, but I remembered to bring one with me. So I have it charging. Are batteries expensive? Yeah, it says that they're 40 bucks a piece. We have two. But so when I got home, I put the, ba put the dead battery in and the charge light came on and stayed on. So you were definitely right about that one, you know, it was, it returned. It says, don't get on <laughs> I take a picture of the house. It's kind of dark there, though. This is Margie's house. Get up the front. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Shut it off. <laughs> shut it off. Shut it off, honey. Come on, shut it off. No. You can't see it now, it's dark. Mm hmm mm -hmm. Now suck my thumb. Come on, suck my thumb. Suck my thumb. <laughs> Come on here, Christy. Christy. Mm. Suck my thumb. Suck my thumb. <laughs> she always does that. Okay, suck my thumb. Mm -hmm. Suck my thumb. Oh, those heat is up that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's took that old thumb of yours? Man, 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 man. There's a shoe. Don't turn your pump test on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said, put on my shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, 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 she seems awful sweaty. Take a picture of Margie's house. Jesus loves Jesus, I know, for the Bible tells me so. No pen. Oh, you want me to put those on for you? You want them on? Grandma put them on for you? Mm -hmm. uh, well, these pictures you shot would be like, uh, about like being here, Sandy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come on, I'll put your shoes on. Come on. No, come over here. <laughs> you come here. Go to Grandma. Where? I'll put on your shoes. They don't want it. Okay, for you. To me, this stuff is the epitome of chocolate. Come on, I'll put on your shoes. 
Thing running. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's got it running. Well, it's taking you around. No, that's, no, that's something. Taking you around. You're wasting film, honey. Get in the car. You're facing well. You gotta water the lawn tomorrow. Now look at all the flowers now. I mean, worried the lady about put took a whole bunch of flowers the other day and she said they took them all. Look at them now. How, how you used to know Indonesian so good. Bud learned a lot from you, I tell you. Let's go. Well, I picture her and Crystal. Go to Mommy. Come over on this side then, Frank. I've always had the sun at your back. Give her to me. Come to Grandpa. And the grandpa. Well, I want to picture her. I gotta know what to put in there. Just put some tape on it. 